Oh, and welcome to another Django tutorial. My name is Tom with LearnPythonTutorial.com. In today's tutorial, we're going to talk about models. Go ahead and open up your models.py folder. And what a model is, is how we structure our data that's going to be stored in our database. All right. So Django makes it easy for us. Um, when we structure our data, it just takes a couple... Um, lines of code and it structures the data the way we want it to um, and the reason why it's so easy is because there's this module up here um, from the django.db import models so when we write our version of the model we get it goes into this module and this module kind of uh, restructures it so the database itself will understand it so basically this module is our middleman so it takes the easy way for us to do it and then it converts it into the harder way where the where the um, database understands it so that's what this import models is and we need to have this here to create our models all right so <clears throat> um, when we create a model we're creating a subclass of models up here all right and the subclass of models is actually our database table if you ever worked in um, with databases you understand the table is the outer layer and then inside the table there's fields so our subclass is the table and then inside our subclass is the fields and that's basically uh, separating the data that's being stored so I'll try to explain it a little bit better as we move through this but we're gonna go ahead and just create a model for our lessons um, App. So if you don't have that open, go to your lessons uh, app here and then models.py, open it up, and let's go ahead and create our first subclass of models. So it'd be class, and then this is going to be our single lesson. So um, if it's a lesson on, uh, say, how to install Django, um, that would be what this model is going to represent. So lesson, so capital. Um, L E S S S O N and then <clears throat> models dot model and this makes it the subclass of this module up here. Alright. So we got models we got class lesson models dot model. Alright. So now it's a subclass. Now it's a database table. Hit return and we're gonna create our first field. Now our first field may be a little confusing to you because you're not going to see what it's actually doing yet, but um, what it is is going to be a choice. We can either cho choose a draft, like our blog post is a draft, or published, like it's published, all right? So what we want to do is give ourselves a choice to say, hey, should this be shown to the public or not shown to the public? So that's what we're trying to do here. So the first one's going to be status choices. <clears throat> and a status choices <clears throat> since it's a choice it has to take a uh, iterable object so an iterable object object would be either a tuple or a list I like to use tuples so we're gonna go ahead and use a tuple so we'll create a tuple and inside the tuple it takes another iterable list or tuple I'm gonna use tuple again all right and then inside here we're going to give our value our value is the first one and then comma and then our second one is the human readable version of the value and you can name it whatever you want it to you can put this as one all right and put this as draft all right but it's easier when you're coding to say hey draft and draft all right um, and then comma the comma separate then we're going to create another tuple and we're going to call this published comma and then make the human readable version of it published all right so this is choices and then if we were to say okay this is our model and we're all, that's all we're going to do this actually wouldn't do anything right now okay because we got to add another portion to that and i'll show you that as we move on here um the other portion will come down towards the bottom of this table or subclass <clears throat> Now the next one we want to do is create a title, a title for a lesson. So we're going to do title, and it's a variable, and title is equal to models. All right, so we're, we're hooking into here, models, 
dot oh, period fat fingers char field <coughs> sorry and this is a character field all right so that's what we're saying to category categorize this field as a character field and the char field takes one argument every time it's a required argument and that's max length equal to I'm gonna to say 250 now my totals will probably never be that long but just in case one is um, what it does is the max length is checked at the database level and during the Django's va uh, validations so it, it will actually um, not save it if it's over 250 or you get an error all right um, <clears throat> that's why I like to get a little bit larger but in reality uh, for SEO purposes, Google doesn't like anything more than 50 to 60 characters, so I wouldn't be using more than 250 for, you know, SEO purposes. What's, what good is a website if you can't rank on Google? So, um, that, you know, that's something I keep in mind. Alright, so, hit return. Uh, the next one's going to be slug. And if you guys are coming from, like, a web development background, you would understand what a slug is. Um, it's normally used for um, URLs, but it basically what it is is a label, and it um, it gives us the the I can't talk today. It's a label that um, we can use to create URLs. So another SEO standpoint would be if we had a title uh, the Django models. Well, the slug would probably be the Django models. All right, so it's it's easy to read, all right. <clears throat> so uh, models dot slug field is our field, <coughs> and this has no required arguments slug field. But uh, I'm gonna put a max length to match my title because I am eventually gonna hook in title and slug to be um, the same, all right. So this way I know that both of them are under 250. And if there's an error, I know, you know, it can't be in this area because I set up both 250. All right. Um, the next one's going to be the body, the body of our um, actual lesson. So, like, you think about, like, a blog post, the body of a blog post. All right. So, body's going to be bodies equal to models.text field. Now, text field takes no arguments, not it can take arguments but there's none required all right so text field is different than char field because char field is uh actually for like smaller bits of text like a title and text field has no limitations on how big it can be so you can use you know you can publish books in here if you wanted to in text field but um if you do add max length that is only because you can have the argument max length in here and say I said 500 all right <clears throat> now where the char field is uh, checked at the database and during validations the text field is only indicated on the widget in the admin area so it really does nothing for you all right so if you had to limit the text that was used here then it's probably better off just using char field so let's go ahead and take out the max length here because it really does nothing for us um, Next one is uh, we want to set a time and date where uh, we can keep track of when the, the lesson was created. So we'll do create it is equal to models again. And we're going to use date time field. All right, in here we're going to add a um, attribute and it's add. Oh, sorry. Brain fart. Add, auto add now equal to true. So what's auto add now attribute do? Um, <clears throat> what this does is actually creates our, um, when we create our lesson, it's going to take the time that when we hit published, it will take that time and save it in our database. All right. So whenever it's created, it will save time. Now the next one is going to be called uh, updated models dot date field. So it's date time fields, 
same, almost the same thing, but now it's going to be uh, <coughs> auto now. True. And the difference between the two is this one will add the time when the lesson is created, and this one will add the latest time it was updated. So if it was updated yesterday, it would have that date. And then if I went and updated now, then it would overwrite that date and have the updated time now. All right. So that's um, how we can say, hey, it was updated on this date and it was created on this date, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> and then now we're going to do uh, status. And status is going to go hook into here. All right. Or this is going to hook into status, I should say. So status is equal to models sorry I keep pausing the video I feel like I have something stuck in my throat all right char field and in here obviously char field takes a uh, required attribute or argument of the max length so we say actually we're just going to use 10 because the longest um, word up here is only nine characters so 10 is doable and then in here we're going to say choices is equal to and choices is equal to our status choices up here so status choices and let me just roll this over here and then we want to set a default and this will protect us from say I went to save the uh, <coughs> save the uh, lesson I don't want to get it published unless it's been done and proofread and everything like that so I'm going to set the default to draft so I don't by accidentally publish something that's not complete. Alright, so uh, draft. And this has to take the value, not the human readable. So here's the value, human readable. Value, human readable. Alright, <clears throat> so we set that. And that's how we hook in our status choices. So this is going to give us... Um, options versus uh, just a regular text field all right? that we see with the title would be a uh, text field and this is going to be a, uh, a choice that we can click on all right so um, then the last thing we need to do this is our models for now and normally when I um, write models I always end up changing them down the road when I start you know designing the site I'll see that I need more information or I need less information. Um, so I'll end up changing them. So don't stick with it and say, oh, you already created this model. I'm just going to breeze through your tutorial now. I'll probably come back and change it. And I'll show you guys how to change it and everything like that. So anyway, we need to, uh, one last thing here is create a function. And the function that takes a, uh, <coughs> a method string method and what it does is basically it's going to return a human readable version of this object this whole thing is an object here and uh, return a human readable version of that so like uh, in the admin section we'll see it when we click on something it's going to return uh, a string and the string is going to be in our case the title of the lesson all right so we create a function and then two underscores string str two oops two underscores and then parentheses self all right and then return self dot title all right so what this is going to do is return the title of the lesson to us so whenever we try to when we grab this object all this data here it's going to return title even though it's grabbing all the data all right so we'll see that in action shortly. If you have any questions about models, I know this is a pretty simple model, um, but this is just starting to get the wheels turning here. And what we're gonna do in the future as we continue to build this um, this learning platform for learnpythontutorial.com, we'll see what we need and we'll see what we don't need, what we need to change, and we'll learn how to do all that. If you have any questions, please leave a comment on YouTube or on our website at learnpythontutorial.com. Don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like the video, and don't forget to share. We'll see you in the next one.